Hi everyone, Teddy Baldessar here. Now, for me, one of the most compelling aspects of a watch where a watch can show its identity and is the initial thing that draws me into looking into a watch further is going to be the dial. So today what we're gonna be doing is looking at a collection of different watches with some, I'd say more noteworthy dials or some just dials that look really good for the money. All of the watches that we're gonna be looking at are gonna be in ascending order. I will also have links down below to full in-depth reviews to any of the watches that we're gonna be mentioning here today. And then we're gonna probably cut it off around $2,000 because I think it's a lot easier to have a very nice looking dial at a more expensive price. So in this video, we'll try to keep it under $2,000 as I think that's a good price range where you can get some good bang for your buck. Also guys, this will probably be the last opportunity where we're gonna keep open the giveaway form for the giveaway uh, that we have running right now. So go down to the form down below Make sure to follow all the instructions. Go to teddybaldasar.com, pick out a few different watch choices, and then be sure to be subscribed here as well as following me on Instagram so you can stay up to date when we announce the giveaway winner. And if you are wondering if the giveaway winner was announced at some point, just check out the form. If it's closed, then the winner is going to be announced or has been announced. So just stay tuned on all bases so you can be uh, up to date in regards to that giveaway. So given that we're gonna be starting in a more affordable tier, I think we're gonna see gradually ascending uh, in terms of maybe complexity and style that you're going to be going for. But in terms of what I classify as a dial, it just has to be maybe a little bit more provoking or eye-catching in some ways. And whether that's color, texture, or something of the sort, uh, we'll probably just give some reasoning behind that. But that's basically my main criteria for this video. So to begin here at a really affordable perspective or more affordable perspective is going to be with a Timex Marlin Automatic Day Date. So why I'm highlighting this specific version with a green dial is very much because of the shade of green. Now looking at some of the Timex Marlins, I, I do think some of them can be pretty hit or miss in terms of their just looks. I think many of them look their price of around 200 to $250. This one though, I think looks a bit more mature. It also looks a bit more I would say captivating in terms of its dial. The green and just how vivid it is, as well as kind of mysterious it is, changing to a black at certain instances, works very well. And then also with the black date disc, allows the design to kind of come together more cohesively. And with that acrylic crystal on the front end, then comes together as a very nice looking watch, especially for a Timex that typically are more affordable watches that look more affordable as well. But this one does, I think, look a bit more elevated than the norm. Now, when it comes to Orient, I think there's a lot of watches that you can include here, maybe looking at their divers as well as the Orient Bambinos, but maybe one that's off the beaten path a bit is with the Symphony Collection, looking at the Symphony 3 here. Now, the star of the show here and why I really enjoy this watch in terms of its maybe dial being a bit more captivating is the applied markers on this dial or just the markers with their kind of high polished finish. They just, I think, allow this watch to look way more expensive than it is. Orient in some instances can also look more affordable with their overall construction. I think some of that could be a byproduct of the logo and some other elements of their designs that just maybe come off sometimes cheap, but not always. I think in many cases, Orient knocks that out of the park. And this is one of those examples because this is the watch that is actually under $200 in terms of a price. It is a little bit on the larger end, but when we're speaking about a dial only, this one really does look very attractive. Now, I'm sorry to break it to you, but there are gonna be some Seikos in this list because I do think value for dollar in terms of what is being delivered on the dial front Seiko, I think, does more than probably perhaps anybody else in the range, especially with under $1,000. Now, the first models we're gonna look at are the cocktail times, and it really doesn't matter what reference we're talking about. I think we all know this uh, just look in terms of the texturized surface with that fine rib grain type of aesthetic on that dial surface with the uh, domed Harlex crystal. It just comes together so well. These dials look better than watches that are, say, three, four times the price in many instances. And just the overall cohesive design language and the theme behind the watch is I think really allow these to be some of the best that you can go for. Pretty much a no-brainer, maybe the biggest no-brainer on this entire list. So next we have a Seiko limited edition, which is also going to be pretty high in numbers. I don't know how much of a limited edition you can say, but once it's sold out, it'll be sold out forever. And that is with the SRPF 41. So I featured this watch in a video I did with Kevin O'Leary where he was kind of reacting to some more attainable or affordable watches. And this was one that even stood out to him. I had him look closely at the dial and I'm like, you know, what do you think that watch is worth? And he really had no idea where this was. And when I told him the price of around 500 bucks, he was almost freaking out. He's almost lost for words. Wow, you're just taking my breath away. That, by the way, that looks like it's worth 1,200 times more. And this is more of that matcha dial, has that green textured finish. This was a model that as soon as I saw it release, I knew it was going to be attractive. And then after seeing it in person, it was even better than I expected. Very attractive looking timepiece. Now to give us a little break from Seiko, we're gonna look at the Laco 
Casablanca. Now the notable thing about this dial is of course it's following a little bit of the classic Laco traditional design. You have kind of a railway minute track, very just uh, traditional in its format. But when you turn the lights off, things all change. So what looks to be a simple white dial is actually a fully loomed dial surface, which is gonna shine with great incandescence. And sometimes this doesn't work and very rarely are you seeing this in a watch of this style. Typically you'll see this type of design on a dive watch, which is why I think it is a bit more compelling and different. I am always a fan of watches that can start a conversation and I can only imagine when you turn the lights off or you're in a dark environment and somebody looks over at your wrist and they just see this Timex Indiglo effect that's happening with your mechanical watch. There's a lot to like with this design. And very similar to what I mentioned with the SRPF41, we also have an SRPF53. And these watches were uh, put side by side as two amazing dials from Seiko in a range of around $500. And this was the other one that was mentioned in that video. I can link to it down below, but a lot to like about this one. So Seiko kind of classifies this in a very traditional way with kind of calling it a serenity of a Japanese garden, which is trying to evoke with this design but it has this very fine grain finish that is also represented on the actual indices as well, which is something I don't see very often and allowing that texturized surface to go from the dial with this light blue effect here and then transition it over to the actual indices. It surprisingly doesn't affect the legibility of this watch dial as much as you would think. It is a bit unconventional, but when you get close up to this watch, it is quite remarkable uh, in terms of what is delivering for the money. And then one final Seiko watch until we have one more a little bit later as we go a little bit higher up price with the Seiko SRPD09. So this is a watch that has a Save the Ocean-esque style dial. The blue is incredibly eye-catching. That gradient effect is also going to kind of tease the eye in many ways. It has a slight shimmer and glossy nature in terms of its dial surface finish. And just that blue and black combination, I think just works very well. You're getting a few different shades of blue, uh, working from a very light blue, dark blue, and then shading into, of course, the black that you'll also see on the dial surface as well. Now moving over to Bulova, going to look at the Bulova Fly Me to the Moon Frank Sinatra edition. So very similar to what was being described with the cocktail time is the same here. We have applied markers on this dial as well to just kind of add to the dial surface and some more texture to it. Now the rib finishing on this one I find is a bit more uh, prominent and also a bit easier to distinguish than the cocktail time. The cocktail time is a bit finer with its approach, but very similar types of texture effect that's taking place here. Now in talking about this watch in general outside of the dial, that's really the main thing going for it. It does have a Miyota 8000 series caliber. So in terms of value for money, not as probably great in terms of looking at the cocktail times, but from a dial alone, also if somebody's a say a Frank Sinatra lover, I think this one of course is going to be right in the running in terms of a really well done dial. All right, so now I wanna look at the Zelos Nova and I'm gonna be quite frank, this could be one of the best looking dials you're gonna find under a thousand bucks. And it is just quite captivating. You have this Aventurine dial that is almost like a galaxy effect with its kind of starry and just sparkling nature, which does come off maybe a bit more ostentation that some might like, but with this more dress oriented design, it does, I think, work in its overall execution. And this is a style that Langa, of course, is very well known for with their Saxonia. In no ways am I comparing the Zelos to a Langa as it's totally different galaxies, but the Zelos and what it's able to do at this price range is impressive. Now, next up, we have the Doxa Sub 200. So these are just south of $1,000. And many people that are, of course, familiar with Doxa understand their really fun use of color and what they're doing. So the original use behind this was because of actual use in diving situations and how legible the dials were. Orange in their test was found to be actually the most effective in reading the time underneath the water. So there is purpose behind this, but that doesn't mean that it can't be enjoyed in many different contexts. So we've done a review on the Sub 200 in the past. We did not review the orange dial one, which is, of course, the professional most popular, but quite a bit of different options to choose from. Yellows, a light blue, more conventional options, but they're black. But if we're talking about having the most fun with the dial, the orange professional as well as the yellow are probably gonna be the two most eye-catching and most fun. Now next, we're gonna look at the Tissot Belade. So just around $1,000, getting a chronometer uh, movement inside of here, but also very attractive bezel. So you kind of have this knurling style dial surface as well as outer bezel, which 
kind of in the same way that I talked about the SRPF uh, 5.3, same kind of effect is happening here, kind of mirroring finishes on two different aspects of the watch itself, and it works very well. The level of finishing on this, I find compared to some of the more entry-level Tissots, is very well done. This and the gentleman, I would say, are more the higher-end Tissot models in terms of an everyday or maybe more dress-oriented timepiece. And the blade, often overlooked within the Tissot collection, does deliver a very nice package when we're talking about dials exclusively. Now, for one final Seiko watch, I promise, we're gonna be looking at the SPD-167. So I also did a review of this watch comparing it to the Tissot Gentleman. And when you put both of those watches underneath the macro, this one did really shine. And you know how much I love the Tissot Gentleman, but this one really did look the part in regards to how it has this more kind of waffle uh, texturized surface on the dial. Very eye-catching when combined with the blue, but surprisingly isn't very overly ostentatious with its approach. And that is kind of Seiko's bread and butter. This one is going to be higher up in terms of the price, but we are getting a 6R35 inside of here with that 70 hour power reserve, but very much a cool looking watch that will certainly just get a lot of people talking. And in terms of photographing, one of the most attractive looking Seikos out there. Now to look at a couple different options from Germany, we're gonna first start with the Panova Blue from Mula Glasuta. So this watch, in terms of what it's going for, kind of has this retro 70s, uh, just combination of colors with orange and blue, as well as this the large loom plot you're gonna find in this thing. It is not gonna be for everybody, but also from a watch perspective, it's very well done and good value for money here. You're getting a proprietary regulator system inside of here, deconstructing the movement and then reconstructing an SW200 within. And in terms of the actual dial, something that is going to grab a lot of attention, but I think for all the right reasons. This is a fun watch. I can see this being a great summer watch and it has this nice sunburst effect to the blue. There's also a green dial version as well, uh, but the blue I think is gonna be a bit more mass appealing and probably a little bit more contained in regards to having some versatility. Now, next we have the Junghans Max Bill. Now, I think this is kind of a, a watch that really isn't going to maybe jump out of you at first, but when I'm talking about a well-designed dial, I just really believe that this is one of the most balanced dials that you're gonna find out there on the market. I have a video where I'm comparing this next to a Nomos Orion, which is an, also a very fantastic watch, kind of getting into the elements of Bauhaus, and maybe that will even further uh, the reason behind why this watch was mentioned in this video. So in order to really appreciate this watch, you almost have to understand what the watch design was generally created to do. So Max Bill, Swiss designer, he was commissioned by Junghans in the 1950s to make wall clocks, and the Max Bill design that he created for the wall was pretty much adapted into a wristwatch, and you can kind of see the elements of this design in terms of the numerals and the script and the typography chosen, as well as the effect of the dial and the use of the crystal, it's all done with intention. So the curling of the dial surface and how it kind of is slanted back at the edge and has a domed effect with the dial as well as the crystal has an effect where it really just jumps out at you. You have these very small lugs and the silhouette of the design really gives way to the dial unlike anything I've ever seen in the price point. And I love just the Max Bill. What it's able to create from a casual perspective and design perspective, as well as a dressy perspective, is pretty much unmatched for the price. So now if we're talking about eccentric dials in this range of say around 1200 to say 2000 bucks, one of the best options is gonna be from Anne Ordain. So this is a Scottish based upstart independent micro brand, however you wanna call it, but what they're really known for is their enamel dials. Now, enameling as a process is very much uh, avoided by watch brands, especially at this price range, just given the trial and error effect of actually working in these kind of high heat environments and making the dial perfect in its execution. But their Fume Model 2 dials are some of the most unique watches that you're going to find in terms of a dial. Uh, enameling is a dying, I think, process in regards to dial design at this price range, because the cost affiliated with it, the time affiliated with it, is not going to usually warrant uh, making it a priority for many brands, but Anne Ordain is doing it and perhaps better than anybody else in this range. Now we're gonna jump back over to Germany looking at Zinn with the Zinn 104 with their green dial. So I've heard people call this a nail polish dial and when you're, I know that might be a little bit polarizing and maybe give people the wrong idea, but if you've ever seen this watch in the wild or if you've seen this watch in specific you know, wrist shots online, the press photos absolutely do not give this one justice. You have this very sparkly type of uh, reflective dial surface that is so far off from what is maybe being projected in some pictures online. It is eye-catching, and you can also see almost like this acrylic effect with the dial surface, but it somehow works very well with this tool watch 
ethos that Zinn has and uh, being this German, very robust brand that you would not expect at all. But this certainly is one of the coolest looking Zinn dials out there. This is commonly sold out. I see this one all the time not being available. So uh, really cool execution of the Zinn 104, a line and family of watches that I really do enjoy. Now for a couple everyday watches coming up next, first with Nomos, with the Nomos Club. And this is a new addition, actually just from Watches and Wonders that I saw, I'm waiting to actually get a model, but from everything that I could tell, this is a lot of fun. Now, one of the challenges with Nomos and their use of color sometimes is when they position it, it's sometimes at the more expensive range. So in the past, you saw with the Ahoy Neomatics with the red and the blue dials that they had that were just really playful and fun. We're talking about $4,000. And I think some people, it's gonna limit the amount of individuals that are gonna go that direction for a watch that is so daring with the color choice. When we're talking about $1,500 to $1,600 and getting something like these orange dials, you know, I think it's a lot more easy to justify going in this direction given the price and range in which they're occupying. The orange dial with gray accents in the traditional club format, I think works. Now the club has always been a fan of orange if you've ever seen the original clubs and what they were providing with those uh, orange hands. And uh, I think it just really worked with the design and more of the same here in how it's executed with these new releases. So hopefully be able to do a review of these soon. Very excited to see how these actually are in person, but all signs show that these are going to be very striking. Next, we have the Oris Big Crown Pointer Date family. And the two models that I'm gonna be looking at primarily are the maroon dial, as well as the green bronze. That combination I think is very striking. Also can mention the Roberto Clemente. Now, part of the reason why I wanted to include these dials, one are going to be the colors, but also just their general execution as a whole. Seeing a pointer date on the market is very different than what is conventional, especially in this range. This is something you see with traditional like JLC, you know, master collection watches and things of that sort that are gonna be of course, multiples of the price. So seeing it under $2,000 is always very cool. Then when you're adding the elements of these different dial colors as well as case materials, I think it really comes together to create a watch from Oris that is maybe not as popular as their Aquases or their Diver 65s, but is right there in terms of maybe some of the best maybe value from an everyday perspective. And then to round out our list, I know I said I'd keep it around $2,000. This one is slightly over $2,000, but one of my favorite watches I reviewed last year. And in terms of what it's going for, much more traditional in regards to the actual dial itself, we have a Longines Heritage Classic Sector. So sector dials are certainly something that is popular now. This is probably one of the most tasteful that I have seen executed. And that is including the JLC Master uh, Control Sector. This one actually would be probably my preference. I like both of them. I love the symmetry of this one, the no date, the blued hands, uh, the just the simplicity of this thing is just so well done. Looking at it up close with the macros, one of the most attractive dials out there in my opinion and from a sector format is a good balance between getting into the luxury perspective as well as maybe not overshooting and overpaying for somebody that wants a dial design of this type. Uh, but the sector, I totally am on board with this becoming a bit more popular and this is one of the best examples of doing it in the price range in which this Longine is occupied at. But all right, guys, that is my list of some of the best dials that you can find up to $2,000. I wasn't able to include all of the watches that I probably wanted to include. I had to make some compromises, but I uh, tried my best. And of course, would love to see comments down below. What other dials would you mention in this price range? I am a huge dial fanatic. That's really what pulls me in when looking at a watch. I can always forgive a lot of other elements to a watch. As long as the movement is reliable, I can deal with that. But if a dial is not to my liking, I can't make it work, I am sorry. So love to see comments down below. Also, definitely take advantage of that giveaway. Check out the form in the description. Make sure to follow all the instructions. Head over to teddybaldestar.com, pick a few different options, and good luck to all of those that entered. I think we're probably around 20,000 entries now. So just keep entering. I wanna keep it open to as many people out there, and good luck again. And if you wanna stay up to date when we announce the winner, subscribe here, as well as follow me on Instagram as well. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.